Hi, good afternoon everybody and welcome to your terrific Tuesday, November 23rd afternoon, part 2 of episode 547. And this is your daily bread passage, your Tuesday daily bread devo. Today we're going to be sharing hope from Zacho Dixon. And her name is spelled X-O-C-H-I-T-L, Dixon. Don't don't ask me exactly how to say it. I just say Zacho, Zachi, however, however I can get it to roll off my tongue. But it, today's passage, today's Devo is derived from 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 10 through 17. So if you're excited for another Daily Bread passage, smash that like button, comment, Comment some positive, encouraging comment toward myself, or some question you may may wonder about me. Do, do it that way, and I'll be sure to respond. Subscribe if you're new. Um, turn on notifications and share the video and channel with your family and friends and help me um, reach that goal of 1,000 subscribers by the first of the year. And even in fact, in the last three videos I've done, or the last three, this morning's video, and in yesterday's two, in yesterday's part one and two, um, even get it to a hundred by the first, and I'll be happy. Maybe bring it down a little bit. Maybe bring it, bring it down to a hundred by the 15th of January. I'll even push it up to January 15th because that will be episode 600. I've already said that in another video. But that'll be episode 600 on the 15th of January. So if I can get if I can get to 100 subscribers by then, I'll be happy. But there's another 30 38 days left in 2021. And then you add another, I say you just add another 15, or just say give, give you 50 days to get to 100, and I'll be happy. Because hope, I'm hoping to have a good amount of people by the time I get to the 100th, the 600th episode. So I can have more people to tune in when I do my live stream. So, but without further ado, Sharing Hope from Zacho Dixon Derived from 2 Timothy 3 verses 10 through 17 Zacho writes As Emma shared how God helped her embrace her destiny as her beloved as his beloved child <clears throat> Hang on just a second. I'll be right back Okay, I'm back. Sorry about that. I had to get some I had to get some refreshment in my throat make sure it was fine because I started to Started to crack. My voice started to crack. I'm still cracking, but got to get the moisture back in my throat. Sorry about that. So as Emma shared how God helped her embrace her identity as his beloved child, she weaved scripture into our conversation. I could barely figure out where the high school student stopped speaking her words and began quoting the words of God. And when I commended her for being like a walking Bible. Her brow furrowed. She hadn't been intentionally reciting scripture verses. Through daily reading of the Bible, the wisdom found it had become a part of Emma's everyday vocabulary. She rejoiced in God's constant presence and enjoyed every opportunity he provided to share his truth with others. But Emma isn't the first young person God has used to inspire others to prayerfully read, memorize, and apply scripture. You can basically say all these videos when I record them, it's doing that to me. I'm doing, if I'm doing a bunch of them at one time, I'm still doing it almost every day. So, now when I'm going day to day, I'm doing it day to day, but now I'm doing, I've recorded three videos already sitting here, and this is the fourth video, and I still got two more to go. So, when I do multiple videos like that, I am reading it 
And I post it. It looks like I'm doing it daily. But I'm recording it beforehand. To get it set up ready to go. So It'd be weird to record the video. Turn around. Post it. Boom. That's your. But That's the way I'm doing it. That's the way I'm doing it right now. But so when, so when the Apostle Paul encouraged Timothy to step into the lead, leadership, he demonstrated confidence in the young man, in this young man. First Timothy four eleven through sixteen. Paul acknowledged that Timothy was rooted in Scripture from infancy. Second Timothy three fifteen, which is one of the verses for today. So like Paul, Timothy faced doubters. Still both men lived as they believed all scripture was God breathed. Then they recognized scripture was useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness. So that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Verses 16 and 17. So when we hide God's wisdom in our hearts. His truth and love can pour into our conversations naturally. We can be like walking Bibles, sharing God's eternal hope wherever we go. And I didn't see that verse up there, but the beginning, the little verse they have on the top page. It says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. Psalm 119.11, which is part of a somewhat of a somewhat of a prayer with the Iwana Clubs that I got drilled in me so when I see it I can remember hey, that's the Iwana Club that's part of the Iwana Club's prayer or something I don't know whether it's a it's a pledge or a prayer to do with the Iwana Clubs but it is that I might sin again I hide the words in my heart that I might not sin against God. That, that's a pledge. I remember that now. Remember how we, when I, when I volunteered with it, at the, um, I think it was at the beginning. Just before we, just before they, they broke up. This group went over and had Bible time. And then the other group, the other, the other part went and had their game time and then after so long the uh, people with the game time went and had Bible time and the others went back and had, had game time and then when that when that got up everybody joined up together and had a uh, leader uh, final time final Bible time what they mean by Bible time because the Iwana Clubs had their own little books that they had to do their workbooks. They had to do their own little lessons. And then at, when everybody was done with their Bible time and game time, everybody came together and had their um, council or time with all the um, volunteers and the um, commander the leader of the Wana Club thing would get up there, uh, speak a little bit. He would lead a little less, a little of his own lesson, and then probably have like recognition, recognition time, and then have a prayer, and then the dis disband and go home for the club for for the night for the week, <laughs> but. So um, let's ponder on this past this devotion with this. How do you hide scripture in your heart and mind? How has God's wisdom helped you share his truth with others? Oh, I can answer that. YouTube. <laughs> my, I may, the full videos may not be getting out, but they are getting to some people. So it's working. To a certain point. But ponder on it with it by saying this. Ponder on those questions by with this. Father, saturate my heart with your wisdom so I can share you with 
others naturally and courageously. Talking about courageously, if you haven't seen it, you're a Christian, watch the movie Courageous. It'll it'll pull at your heartstrings. And watch all the other movies in the, in that in that line. Flywheel. Um I'm trying to remember. Hang on just a second. Movies are right here next to me. Fireproof, Facing the Giants, Flywheel, and then the Courageous movie. See, there's those. Those three. I just happened to find them in a three-pack. And then there's the movie Courageous. And that, that, that's a pretty good one. But somehow, there's a, um, what do you call that? Production company right there in Georgia. Right there in, I think it's like Valdosta, in that section of the Georgia that does these movies. And you can see the guy where my finger is on. He's in the Courageous movie. He's in Flywheel. And I think he's in Facing the Giants. Let me see. Because there's the Flywheel movie. And that guy right there, he's in the Courageous. And I don't know... Yeah, he's the coach of the ball team for facing the Giants. But well, Fireproof is put out by the same people, but it has Kirk Cameron in it as the fire guy. So, I've, ne I've never actually watched this one. I've seen bits and pieces of it, but I've never watched it. So. But I, I, I believe I picked this up when I was at the thrift store. Um, my first Baptist thrift store when I worked there. So I believe I picked that up there. But if you haven't seen any of those movies, do so. And if you're a good Christian, you'll, you'll be able to watch them and get, get, get a um, blessing out of them. But, but that's all I have. Your, uh, let me, wait a minute. Back that up. Your Bible reading for this one is Ezekiel 20, 21 and James chapter 5. So, that's all I have for you today. Tomorrow's part 2 for, for your glorious Hump Day Wednesday part 2 episode 548 part 2 for Wednesday, November the 24th, the day before Thanksgiving. We're going to be talking about the will of God from David H. Roper. R-O-P-E-R, -E Roper. And it's derived from Psalm 62. So you'll have that tomorrow. But you'll also have belief systems drive global events for your part one tomorrow morning. So Stay tuned for your um, turning point later this evening. After 7, but sometime before 10, hopefully. And I love you and I appreciate you. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Keep on keeping on and trusting God. He'll keep you safe in all you say and do. And until, and until later, peace out, everybody. <whistles> Goodbye. God bless. Have a wonderful rest of your terrific Tuesday afternoon. Come back again tonight for your Tuesday turning point. And I'll see you then. Goodbye.